Hello everyone, welcome to another video on this YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to just walk you through the upgrade of the Veeam data platform. Uh, in this case, the advanced part, or uh, I mean, the component itself is the Veeam one. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm just using the data platform uh, ISO, which has the three products, uh, Veeam Backup and Replication, Veeam One and Orchestrator. Let's click on uh, Upgrade Veeam One. And the process is pretty smooth, very simple, right? We should just go through the license agreement. It's telling us uh, from what version to uh, the target version, which is 12.2, as, uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, Ving One uh, supports from version 10, uh, 10A uh, onwards. Let's click uh, next. Next on the on the license, uh, let's introduce here a service account, um, user and password. That's the service account I'm using, but maybe you are you might be using some generic um, service account for the uh, for the Ving One services. On that case, on my case, it's a small lab, so I'm just using the administrator. But I truly recommend it to you um, to look into the help center and create an account with just the needed uh, privileges. The server itself, the database, it's okay. It's just uh, I have a SQL Server instance and. Let's click upgrade now. This process, I, I have accelerated this process of the uh, of the pack of the steps, you know, uh, four steps, which is just upgrade the Ving One server, uh, the Ving One reporting services, and the the the, the, the Ving One monitor client. Uh, but it just took around on a, uh, around five minutes on on my environment. Uh, that might depend on your your resources, right? Um, on my side, it was just it was just five minutes. Um, what it completed now in around uh, ten seconds, twenty seconds, right? It it is asking about the login out, uh, logged out and login as per usual. Let's open the uh, the client, the Bing One Bing One client. Let's wait a bit. Here we are on the uh, version 12.2 console, uh, the, 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 the Ving One client. And now let's take a quick look here into the about. The about is 12.2, so that is that is nice. That is the GA release. And uh, let me show you a couple of, couple of things here. So for example, if we go into the Ving Backup Replication, and then uh, I, I I expand my my Veeam backup replication tree. There you go. So, couple of new th new things here. I do not have support for. I do not have any data cloud vault added, so I cannot show you. But for example, under the data protection uh, list of jobs here and the filters. We can see Proxmox V and Ovirt KVM because uh, that is supported now in Ping One. If you have these platforms in Veeam Backup and Replication, you will see the jobs, uh, the jobs here. Same as the backups as well, you will see them under the repository itself. And other interesting things that are coming on the uh, Veeam Data Platform Advance, uh, Veeam One version 12.2. Let me log in here as current user. Well, this is the first time I'm, I'm opening the browser, so it's asking me for the credentials next time. If you don't close the browser, it is it remembers the uh, it does remember the user and password um, that you introduce here. Okay, perfect. Continue. Let's let's walk through the let's let's walk through the wizard, right? So welcome to the uh, Bing One UI. Okay. Um, yeah, Veeam Data Cloud Vault, as I mentioned, right? If you are using this uh, very simple and new uh, repositories in Veeam Backup and Replication, it's just one click. Uh, Veeam One supports those. You will see uh, all of that on the reports. Proxmox V, Red Hat, and Oracle KVM. I mentioned that already. And Microsoft 365 Restore Audit. That uh, it requires Veeam Backup, and, uh, Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365 version eight. I don't have, I, I do not have it just yet installed, um, but that's going to be very, very powerful. You will find that uh, on the dashboards here is a new dashboard. Um, you have a new report as well dedicated, the new alarms. I'll show you that um, as soon as the Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365 version eight goes GA as well. I'm going to install it and show you that uh, in a video. But couple of couple of improvements. Uh, well, for example. I don't really like to have here not mapping the widget settings. That that's even for version 12.1 Thread Center, right? Um, let me grab all my repositories, but 
this one. Let me see which one is the one that I'm using. Uh, I'm using a sober to send some copies to another place. It's that one, that's the sober. Uh, everything else, it's on my uh, small lab that I have, I have here at home. Let's assign some location. Again, all of this is just thread center from version 12.1. You can even just put your uh, your closest city, for example, team on my case, but well, in any case, let's let, let just use London here uh, from Northern Europe. That will be the London I'm looking for. And now let's take the other repository um, because I'm sending it to a cloud provider. Um, so let's put here that this is, for example, in, uh, in Dublin. There you go. Yep, perfect. There you go. Okay. Uh, that's a small thing for 12.1. Uh, now, um, things that have been added in 12.2, uh, uh, particularly, it was a couple of, uh, couple of uh, small things, but it will make the difference, especially on your uh, on the score, right? The warlock exclusion rule that is what is new on here. Let's add all of the all of the warlords. Yeah, click next, and you you will see here that I have 15 protected and 22 that they don't have uh, any protection. That can be agents, that can be DMs, etc. Same for the RPO anomalies, right? Uh, over here. But if you scroll on this uh, on this table, right? So some of them are good. It's just missing the day from, from a day. I can always adjust that a bit. But look, take a look at some of the VMs here, some of the warlords, right? The HP store one, some NGINX, the on tap, which is a virtual appliance, right? Uh, for storage. Let's let's exclude all of those on using this new warlord exclusion rule on the widget itself. Uh, so it's very simple. It just support the names here and then semicolon. You can keep adding more uh, as well. You can use um, uh, uh, masks as well. So, for example, VC, VCLS, because of course we are not, not going to protect those from, from VMware. That's another example. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, so, the the on top, it's still there. Some prox Veeam proxies Linux, some Veeam XFS, which are the repositories which I have virtualized on my environment. You get the idea, right, about getting some exclusions here from uh, the, RPO, the, the RPO anomalies, which is a very nice widget just to see what uh, the, the, the hotspots, right, what is missing there. Um, but now with this world exclusion rule, we can quickly and very, very, very simple add some exclusions there. All right, let's take a look. Much, much better. I still have some proxies there. Uh, so let's... I thought I, I have added the, oh no, I just added the uh, XFS, but of course uh, I wasn't excluding the, the proxies. Let's exclude all the proxies, right? So that will be like uh, V minus PRX and then just the, just the asterisk. So whatever is going to be, the, because I have a three or four of them, they with the same nomenclature, there you go, much cleaner. And you know what? Now we can of course take that, uh, those exclusions that they work very nice on these RPO anomalies and go and put it here on the data protection status. So I can exclude the same ones from the mini widget. So my score will be will be a bit up because of course right now uh, it is much better uh, the, the, the number I'm excluding some of the warlords that I know for sure they do not need to be protected. So that's all. We will see much more on another video when we have been back up for Microsoft 365 version 8 and when we have Proxmox as well. Thank you for watching. Bye.